In this video, we're going to go through the Inception LPR, Low Pressure Regulator, talk about what makes it different than other regulators, how to take it apart, how to rebuild it, and how to make sure everything is working correctly. So, your regulator is going to come assembled with a fitting, that's uh, the barb, the 1032 barb, which runs this low pressure hose and the low pressure gas out of the regulator. They used to come with a barb installed, but since you almost always have to remove the barb before installing the LPR, we're actually having it come separately now. This is the V2 LPR from Inception Designs. And not easy to see, but the front is actually now an Allen key hole location. And a 3 16 Allen key can be used inside there to adjust it under pressure or to take it apart. Now you can actually do it with your fingers as well, but it's designed to be a little bit tight, especially uh, tighter under pressure so that it doesn't accidentally adjust. <clears throat> so if you've got strong fingers, you can do it by hand, but if it's under pressure, sometimes you might want to use an Allen key to do it. That is a feature of the version two of the LPR. I'm going to completely take it apart and then we will go through what some of the features inside it and then we'll put it back together. So the stainless steel adapter, we sell these separately. Um, this is what screws into the front block of the gun. This is one eighth NPT threads. When you install this, you do need to use a thread sealer. And this is a tapered thread, which means as it screws in, it will automatically get tighter. And part of the seal is actually formed because the two sets of threads crush against each other. Now to take this off, you're gonna need a 16 millimeter wrench. And that's just gonna unscrew. There is a O-ring seal on there. Okay. Now, if you're working on your LPR, you can actually unscrew the LPR and leave this in the front block. It makes it super easy to work on the LPR and then put it back onto it and everything will stay lined up correctly for when you reinstall the LPR. You do not need to remove the stainless steel piece from your front block if you're working on your LPR. <clears throat> so we're gonna take the front cap off. And this has an O-ring on the outside that is only there to create friction so that the cap doesn't move without you meaning to move it so the LPR pressure doesn't change. I don't recommend you grease that. Just leave it clean. Inside, you're gonna see the spring. And you're going to see the 1032 threaded hole, which is how you get the piston and get it out of the LPR. So you can use anything that is 1032 threaded to get the piston out. In this case, I've actually got a pump arm. We sell a longer bolt for doing it as well. And that simply is gonna screw into the piston just a few turns, you don't have to make it tight. And then that will allow you to pull the piston out. The piston in the V2 LPR has dual O-rings. It's hollowed out for extra volume inside and dual O-rings so it is more stable in the bore so you get better performance under rapid cycling. Okay, so just unscrew that from there. All right. Okay, and then inside you can see the piston brass nut and a 10 millimeter or 3 eighths nut driver or socket. You can go in there and remove that and out will come the brass nut, the plunger, and the spring. And then all you're left with is the body of the LPR. So it's super simple, super reliable. And it might be a little bit hard to see inside here. I'm gonna try and get the angle right. I think you can just make out that we now actually machine out way more inside there. So the centerpiece where the brass nut screws into is actually machined out all around. And then we also drill more holes in there, create extra volume. 
So this actually works like a volume chamber after the gas is regulated. I'm trying to get a good, good angle for you to see it. It's not easy to see on the camera. You can see those extra holes. And that's an extra volume. So what this means is you have more volume of gas after it's been regulated. Now on older guns, which have heavier back blocks and heavier bolts, this means you can run a lower pressure and still have enough volume to cycle the gun smoothly and reliably. And it means on guns that are running faster, you can run them more reliably without having to run too high a pressure. Running a lower LPR pressure, as long as you have the springs and the gun set up for it, means your bolt is very gentle on the paint and you're less likely to break paint. This is one reason why the Inception guns are super smooth, super quiet, and super gentle on paint compared to other guns that have been made or are available. So this actually is extra volume inside the V2 LPR. And it works phenomenally well on all of our new guns, but it's also designed specifically to work better on all old guns. And that's a big change from what we had with our version one LPR. The changes between the version two and our earlier LPRs are that internal volume chamber, the dual O-ring piston for stability, machined out again for more volume, and the Allen key adjustable end cap. So this is all of the parts for the regulator. I'll just try to lay them out in the order that they're gonna go into the gun. And you can see that really very simple. <laughs> simple, performs phenomenally well, and it's very reliable. So if you get a regulator and you need to rebuild it, or you bought a raw regulator and you need to build it up, it's gonna come with a whole bunch of O-rings. And the easiest way to do this is to just get them all out, lay them out in size, and it makes it super easy to know which one goes where. So you're gonna have one, which is slightly larger, two, the same size, one, a little bit smaller, one, very small, and then two tiny. Okay? You see all those earrings. So, very simple, the large one is going to go on the cap, and that is just a friction O-ring to make sure that there's tension on the knob and it doesn't unwind itself accidentally. The next two O-rings are gonna go on the piston. If you have an older regulator that only uses one O-ring, then just one of those O-rings goes on there. The next O-ring goes on the stainless steel connector to seal between the main body and the stainless steel adapter. The small O-ring is the one that goes around the brass nut. And then the two very small O-rings are the ones that go on the plunger. Now, for performance, the only ones that actually affect whether the regulator is gonna work well or not are the two small ones that go on the plunger and the one that goes on the brass nut. If you're having issues where the LPR is creeping or it's letting through too high a pressure, those are the three that you want to change. If you're having an issue where gas is leaking out the front of the regulator, then it's likely that one of those is bad, causing it to overpressurize. And then you've actually blown the O-ring on the piston as well. So you'll want to change those two on the stem, the one on the brass plunger, and the ones on the piston. And those are the only ones that actually relate to the regulator working correctly or leaking out of the piston head. <clears throat> this O-ring won't make any difference to it leaking. This O-ring won't make any difference to it leaking. When it comes to assemble the components, most important thing is greasing the two small O-rings on the stem. And you're gonna to want to do that with dowel 33. And don't be too shy about grease on these. So you're gonna to wanna to put the grease on those O-rings, run it round. You're not gonna want quite so much on the one where it gets pointy as you are on the rear one. 
and then you're going to take your spring and that's going to fit over there and what you all want to do is put more grease on the end of that spring as well because you don't want it catching the o-ring as the o-ring moves through the body and that is going to drop straight down into the center bore and fit inside like so and then your brass nut is going to fit over that and this can be a little bit fiddly to get into place so a set of tweezers or a long nose pliers isn't a bad idea and it's going to fit over that pin and then you're going to have to apply a little bit of pressure down onto it to tighten it into place you've got to compress that spring then it'll be tight like so once you get it built like that you're going to want to put your finger on that pin actually not a finger you want to use an allen key because it's quite a strong spring so take an allen key and make sure that you can push that pin in and out be careful not to bend it but make sure that you can push that pin in and out which means it's correctly seated and very simply we're going to put our piston rod back onto a 1032 threaded bolt or in this case pump arm we're going to put a little dowel 33 on those o-rings run them around then you're going to hold it square to the body and just slide it in nicely okay and again just push up and down on it make sure that piston's moving up and down nicely that's all good take out the rod you're going to put the spring back in now some of our earlier lprs actually have a shim here as well to give it a little bit more pressure range and then you're going to take the lpr knob simply screw it in now this lpr when the uh, knob is out goes to zero so to start off with you want to leave it out probably millimeter and a half, 60,000, something like that. And your pressure will be low. And then you can screw it in to increase the pressure as you need. And then we're gonna have the stainless steel piece for the back. And that's just going to screw in the back nice and easy. And you're gonna want to snug that up. So it's tight against the body, make that O-ring seal. And then that's it, you rebuilt the LPR. You just have to install the 1032 threaded barb. If you've taken a fitting out of here, you're going to want to put um, a thread sealer onto that, just a tiny little bit before you install it again. We recommend Vibratite 442. Again, we have that available for sale on our website. Another great product from Vibratite. <clears throat> and that's actually what you would also use on this threaded interface as you screw it into the front block do not use blue loctite here or here do not use vc3 neither of those are the correct products you're going to want vibratite 442 or an equivalent loctite thread sealer both here and here so that's all there is to rebuild your lpr make sure it's working perfectly we have lpr version 2s available and we have the o-ring kits available through inception designs or in any inception designs dealer thank you